All right, cool. So welcome to my channel. We're going to be talking about the Curve Creek Pro 3.5. This is Chris's boat, and he uh, was so kind to let us talk about it. So first thing we're going to talk about is the specs. This boat uh, is a boat for big people. A boat for big people. It has a weight range of 165 pounds to 253 pounds. It's 8 feet 8 inches long. It's 26.7 inches wide. It weighs 50 pounds and it has 87 uh, gallons of volume. So it's right up there with those modern creek boat numbers of the volume close to being at 90 and um, the length being about the same. So Chris, why don't you uh, tell us, share with us what you like about this boat, what you don't like about this boat, and some of the features that are unique to this boat. It's a little bit of a throwback towards like a river running design, something like the Remix, in terms of how the rocker moves from bow to stern. Mm -hmm. And they took a few of the things that they found with the Cali, which is another boat that, another creek boat they have that came out a little bit before they introduced the Curve Creek. One of the things they took from it, for years, Prion has had no pillars in any of their boats, maintaining that their plastic is stronger than everybody else's and they don't need them. This was the first boat that they put, or the Cali was the first boat they, they put pillars back into. And this boat shares that. One of the nice things is that the pillars are on a really strong rubber band system, and you can undo the band and pop them out for when you want to do an overnight and you want more room. And they're really only oh, about really? this long in both the front and bow. So it creates more foot room up here for people with big feet and a little bit more storage back here, even with it in the boat. Hmm. But it does really increase the rigidity through the top and the bottom of the boat. That crushing pressure. Mm -hmm. And it holds the seat track in place really well also. So I like that Prion added those back in. I like that they can come in and out. And I've taken them out for a couple overnights, and the boat is cavernous when you pull them out. It, it can take the kitchen sink and the fridge. So that's great. Uh, if you can kind of see the sidewall, it's got a pretty tapered sidewall that then kind of flattens here. And there's this huge patch of secondary stability that comes with this flat surface. So it's stable while it's flat and then it's again stable kind of like right in here so in those moments when you're about to go upside down and you're concerned and nervous and like oh no you find this really stable spot right here that it's happy to sit there and it has saved my bacon a couple times on really rocky stuff where I get knocked around mm -hmm. and it's a really good feeling to have that there hmm. excellent excellent yeah, I love this boat, how they, they made a boat with creaking in mind, right? So to be robust, um, short, right? And very, um, very voluminous right here in the bow and a, a high deck height, a very high deck height that gives this flat profile, unlike your, your scoop that you might find in some other modern boats um, like the Piranhas. So cool, let's um, talk about the bottom here. All right, so here we go. The bottom of the Curve Creek 3.5. Prion is calling this bow a displacement, and I'll let Chris Mays take it over from there. What do you think about that, Chris? You can see where the edges soften. So the chines that they've built in here, right, where the sidewall and the bottom come together, mm -hmm. they soften it out towards the bow, and this is that displacement character where it is rounded. Mm -hmm. As you move back towards the seat, kind of under the seat there's a little bit of displacement out towards the sides but the middle mm -hmm. is pretty planing very flat so it lets the boat pivot really well and it keeps that forgiving gentle kind of rolly feel of a true displacement hold boat mm -hmm. and that said it's got these long chines under the paddler that really keep it online mm -hmm. give it something to track with give it something to carve with. You still feel like you could put this boat on an edge yeah. similar to a dis, uh, planing hole. Yeah, the edge is there and it's supportive, but at the same time, it's not grabby. Not There's grabby. There's no in-cut to it. So like uh, some other boats, like the Stern of the 9R series, 
it has that same chine where it the sidewall and the hole just come together and it's not in cut but there is an edge there that's pretty defined yeah definitely a lip and you know i think they accomplish a great rounded uh profile not only with the bottom of the hole but the sidewall and how the sidewall meets the bottom it gives it like a wide feeling but a narrow stance right because it starts wide on the deck and it tapers well to the to the water line and you have a long water line with a little bit less surface area flat underneath your butt for acceleration and then it tapers nicely um here to the stern and it's got this like this is what i love about this boat in the bow and stern it has this like just secondary like just like a just a little notch going on in the back which i mean it, it, it like like getting surfed in a hole okay you want to be able to maybe stick your back edge out and grab it have a little something there to grab and pull you downstream so yeah i think the bottom of this boat is just very very cool the bow is very robust um and you know if you're going to take a boat down a creek in colorado probably want to be made out of the strongest plastic available so yeah super jealous of chris's boat here Let's flip it over and take a look at the outfitting. All right, so this boat was first released in 2017. Chris, do you know which model year you have? I think this is an 18. I'm not Probably totally sure on that. Number and check. So yeah, um, this is that rubber band that Chris is talking about. A very durable rubber band that holds the bulkhead in place there. Holds the seat pan in place. Um, at, on the bottom of this seat pan, it comes with Gosh, that feels like at least a quarter inch thick, maybe even more of mini cell. Yeah, um, it is glued down too. It is glued to the hole, yeah. interesting. We have a uh, throw rope holder here. What's the spare back band? No, that's actually an adjustment for the seat. That's how the, the seat, seat adjusts. And back. Wow, yeah. interesting. Is there any adjustment you have to do back here to loosen it or? Nope, there's two, the two normal prion screws in mm -hmm. the seat pan that go down through the top of the hole and you just loosen those a little bit and if you, take a look behind the hip pads you see this metal track mm -hmm. that they just slide yep. along that great that's, interesting that's the pro outfitting this is I the think pro it's also outfitting. on their sport yep. as well but i think the sport lacks this seat forward and back adjustment mm -hmm. uh, if you're serious about kayaking whitewater you're gonna want the pro version of any boat because the sport what the sport was really designed for was clubs people who might have rental boats, um, people who are gonna be sharing boats and aren't gonna be buying a boat for themselves. If you're gonna be buying a Prion for yourself, especially brand new, spend the extra $200 and get a pro outfitting system um, because it's gonna come with your pillars, it's gonna come with the seat track, and it's just what Prion designed for people who paddle whitewater. It is kind of nice that they still offer a club set outfitting. They're yeah. one of few boat manufacturers um, it's a very ergonomical solution to offer people. Yeah, it's it's ergonomic. It's also economic. Soul and Dagger, the two other manufacturers that still offer a lower tier outfitting. So, yeah, so that's a good in-depth look at the outfitting. We have this awesome thigh hook that doesn't extrude very long, but provides the paddler with great contact points. Um, Part of that is personal preference for me. I have them slid up and in you can hook these way over like this and have them hooking all the way around your leg mm, if that's where you want them to sit okay i've moved mine back this way to be able to get in and out of the boat more easily very cool so not only do you have fore and aft adjustment on these thigh hooks but you also have um the amount of hook you want mm -hmm. by spinning it along these tracks yep so yeah, they um, are very, I think Prion is very um, ingenious with their outfitting design and have been for years. All right, so let's talk about a little bit of the stern here. We have um, the only metal grab handles I've ever seen on a Prion kayak so far. Um, we have two nice grab handles here, lots of room for your hands. We have a nylon grab handle here, feels like it's reinforced um, inside that with some type of material. Maybe that's just for it to keep its structure. 
Yeah, it's also to make them stand up mm -hmm. so that they're a little easier to see. Um, the bow and stern grab handles with this raised profile, it's quick to clip it. It's easy to grab it if you're towing a swimmer, mm -hmm. if you're moving your boat around, lowering it on a rope, pulling it out on a rope, being able to just throw a carabiner at it and have it clip in is quite nice. Yes. Yes, this boat was built with a lot of safety features in mind, um, which is fantastic for a creek boat, like I said. For them just to take what they started with with the Cali and make it safer um, and offer more sizes for a, a large range of paddlers, it's just great. So yeah, here's another look at that sidewall. We got the kick rocker. And Chris, would you say you have a problem with the tail taps when no. you come off booths with this boat? Really no. The little bit shorter length makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. Totally. Only eight foot eight instead of a full nine feet. And it's got a little bit more kick character to the stern, but overall it's a pretty continuous rocker profile mm -hmm. about the stern. And it doesn't have that hard line kick that would keep the stern a little lower mm -hmm. on a racier boat like a 9r mm -hmm. so for me that little bit higher rocker a little bit less squared off stern mm -hmm. helps avoid a little a few of those tip taps yeah and that's what i just think i mean i look at this boat and i think of taking it down a creek because it's everything is rounded nothing's sharp it's all meant to slide and boof and and just make it down some awesome creeks. So here we are moving on to the bow. Um, and just a very unique bow shape, I'd say. I mean, I can't think of any other creek boats that are shaped like this. So let's see what you like about that bow there, Chris. It sheds water pretty well off the deck. I'm not convinced that these sort of speed flares mm. do all that much. Okay. Um, but it does resurface pretty well. This has a nice rounded shape to it that sheds water pretty well mm -hmm. and i haven't played around with the seat too much the guy i bought it from was about the same size as me mm -hmm. but i've noticed that the bow rocker is a little lower than something like a 9r or a scorch absolutely or any of those really new modern elf shoe designs but i don't mind that the little longer water line definitely increases stability and it Instead of a rip to skip, mm -hmm. it's more of a, mm. a rocking sort mm -hmm. of resurfacing off of a booth. Mm -hmm. And it it feels like it moves away from things really in control okay. as opposed to moving away from things skipping so hard and fast yes. that you're trying to bring it back down in control. Yeah. I mean, I think that's awesome because, I mean, it has that nice water line. It, it's going to be fast when you need it to. And I think everything with this boat was just thought of with smooth lines in mind, right? Let's just make everything nice and smooth. And um, I'd say smooth paddler lines in mind as well. Yeah. People who are looking for smooth lines and maybe not the most abrupt or the rowdiest lines out there. Yeah. I mean, this boat has no secondary chine, anything like you'll see um in like the the new pike has a has a little wave chine right here that helps get the water away from the bow but i just think they wanted to keep this boat so smooth uh for creeks in mind and i think they did a really good job so i'm sold i'd love to include one into my fleet the 3.5 seems a little bit out of my range but unfortunately that's the only creek model that they make the curve out of am i correct and the difference between like this one and the other curves the 3.0 mm -hmm. and the 2.5 the smallers is they just took a little bit more volume out of the stern okay. so this concave or convex surface here very they, prominent. Flat, they flattened it out a little bit and this is where they added most of the volume there's a little bit here in the hips and a little bit here in the bow compared to the 3.0 yeah, which is quite a large lip right there yeah and this is nice but compared to the 3.0, which I've paddled a little bit in Oregon, okay, the 3.0 feels a little bit more like a river runner, and this feels a little bit See, more like a creeker. Right, and I don't want I want something that feels like a creeker, but this, um, yeah, I don't know if I need 90 gallons of volume, um, but I love the length and the lines of this boat. So really awesome boat. 